Hey, it's Steve with Raybuck Auto Body Parts. I got the 53 Chevy pickup behind me. I'm um, going to do a little project. It's one of the last ones um, that we didn't get to or I didn't get to when we were building it because we kind of just rushed through it. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. It's going to be a little filler piece right for here in front of the radiator. So originally, um, and in the aftermarket, you still get this piece. There is a small piece that would have bolted right here to these four bolt holes, which is why there's two more holes here. Um, and it goes in a little bit, comes up, and wraps in. It literally just fills like this gap, like the gap that's between um, the uh, uh, this front plate here, the apron, and the radiator itself. So what is it? It's probably about, uh, I don't know, maybe about an inch and a half, two inch and three quarter, two inches, something like that. Um, <clears throat> but it literally only comes into there. It doesn't cover any of the radiator. It doesn't cover this outside uh, radiator support, which I think is just ugly. Um, it just doesn't look finished. So instead of buying and bolting that piece in i'm going to make a piece i literally am just going to get a piece of flat stock which is sitting over here it's just a 12 inch by 36 inch piece of flat stock i'm going to use this brake that i have uh you guys may have seen the video about that one of the other videos just got that from harbor freight um it's nice it's a sheer finger brake and it's uh, got a slip roll on the top which don't need the slip roll for this project and we're gonna make a piece to go in here so I sat here and thought about it for a while. I was originally going to make a piece similar to what the original one would have been. So it came across, came up, over, and then I was going to angle the two sides to kind of match the slope of the, the uh, edges of the radiator. The problem with that is if you do that, you don't really have a good way of bolting this down because you can't get behind here. Because if you see from the back side, this is solid. So I can't get my finger in there to hold the nut on to bolt the, uh, the two sides. Like I'm not really that concerned about the center. Um, it was mainly just the two sides. So I think what I'm going to do, um, I got two options. One is I can cut the tops of the radiator support on either side and then make a little notch out of it so I can get my finger in there and get the nut in. Or what I might do is um, have a piece that doesn't attach to this, have it attached to the side here. So I might just come up on an angle over and then down in the front and maybe, maybe make a little L lip in the bottom of it to either overlap this or, or butt up to it. Um, you can see there's only a small, small gap uh, between the radiator support and, and this front piece. So I might just come straight down and leave a little teeny gap there. Um, I'm going to get a couple small pieces of steel and bend them up first. I'm going to run a flat one across here and one with a little bend in it and just kind of see what it looks like um, and then decide from there. But I think that's what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to make it so that it has two tabs, one that comes down on this side and one that comes down on this side. And then I'm just going to put two self-tapping screws in either side and that should lock it in place. It's going to be a fairly lightweight piece. Um, so I'm not really worried about getting additional uh, uh, supports or uh, bolts into it. And if I get a couple screws in it, that'll keep it from vibrating or, or twisting. So uh, I think I'm going to do that. And I think on the top, I'll probably cut around uh, the radiator cap a little bit so that it overlaps uh, the radiator at least halfway, maybe the full way. I don't know, though, because this uh, overflow ho uh, overfill hose is the uh, or overflow hose, sorry, is in the uh, way. So if I try to go over top of that, it might actually hit the bottom of the cap and the cap might not go on properly. So I'm going to mess around with a couple options, but uh, I'm going to get started here in just a little bit. I'll show you guys what I do with the uh, sheet metal, with the brake and bending up some pieces and uh, fast forward through a lot of that and uh, or speed it up and then uh, we'll see how this thing turns out. Okay, so I got my measurements. Um, so it's 23 and a half, my measurement is 23 and a half from outside of rad support to outside of rad support. Sorry if you hear something in the background, that's my dog Ruby, she's chewing on a bone. Um, I want to come up about four inches, actually it's exactly four inches, it gives me a little bit of overlap behind here, straight up, and then I'm going to do four inches back. And then, since I'm going to have an angle, I got to calculate about another half an inch so if this was flat and I laid it down, that picks up another half an inch. So I go from 23 and a half to 24 and a half, and then I want it to overlap about an inch on either side. So that would be about 26 and a half. I'm going to make it 27, give me just a little bit of wiggle room. So um, that should be it. I'm not going to do anything overlapping this front piece. I'm literally just going to come straight up and straight back. I'm going to see if I can go over top of the um, overflow tube that's here, and then just do a cutout. Uh, around my filler cap. So hopefully this will come up and cover 
uh, all of the ra uh, radiator and it's going to come almost to the very back edge and from the side it'll cover all of this and it's just going to come out to like there so it's going to come up a little bit angle across angle down and down uh, so that's going to be it and then i'm just going to attach it on both sides here and on here that way if i need to take it off the two screws on either side that whole piece comes off and i can get to everything else it should be pretty straightforward so here's my sheet i got it uh, measured got my 27 mark right here i got my eight inch mark i'm going to put it in the uh in the machine here and cut everything and then uh start bending it up and we'll see how this goes Okay, so there's my piece, 8 inches by 27. I'm going to put a mark at 4 inches, I'm going to bend this in half, um, and then start fitting it up in there and getting ready to make my cuts and get my angles in there to bend it down. Okay, there we go. There's our bend, our four by four piece. Now I'm going to uh, set it in there. And again, like I said, get my measurements for either side. I think it's gonna be somewhere around like seven inches. I'm gonna have to cut a little slit here and a little slit here. I'll bend both of these sides down. I'll tack weld it in place. And then I'll bend the end angle down. And then I can cut, once that's all done, I'll just cut the front off grind it down and do a little bit of body work. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna try it out right now and see what we need to cut off. For this particular setup, uh, again, this is 47 through 53 with an aftermarket uh, aluminum uh, radiator, but a standard style radiator, standard size. Um, I marked my center point of my sheet and then I had uh, the center part of the radiator before it starts to slope is around 13 and a quarter inches, so I made my marks at 13 and a half. So essentially I went from the center out six and three quarters, and I don't know if you can see that, but that's where my line is, my other line. So then all I need to do now is cut the edge of this from here down to my mark. Okay, I got my piece cut, just used a uh, cutoff wheel, put my two lines in it, two cuts in it, now I'm getting ready to make my first two bends. Um, you can see, probably can see, I took two of the fingers out of this break, two of the bigger ones, you just left this little one, or uh, this, this section in the center, it's like a six inch section or whatever, um, so that I can make my two bends. And that's one of the things I really liked about this machine, um, and I said it in the one video where I actually went through the whole operation of this, um, is the fact that uh, it's a finger break. So you can do little boxes or little pieces like that. So here are my cuts on the other side. I took my lines that I had here for the edge of my uh, radiator where the bends is and I just transposed them on the other side and then I'm going to get ready to, um, to start bending these. Now I don't have an exact angle so I'm just going to bend it a little bit and then test it and then bend it and test it and keep working my way in. Uh, but this is nice because you can, like I said, you can put it right in here, get it lined up. It's going to take me a second. Actually. I'm going to extend that line all the way over to make sure it's square, and then I'm going to get this in here. I only want to do this once. Okay, extended my line all the way across, now we're going to get this thing back. And this works because, again, this was only four inches. If this was a little bit bigger, then yeah, you wouldn't be able to use it in this machine. But uh, for what it is, for using it in a uh, home garage, um, it's going to get most of it. Most of the job's done that you're going to need to do for building little things like this. Okay, we got that lined up. Let's give it a little bend. Okay. And there you go. There's my first one. 
So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go put it in the truck, see if this angle is pretty close. If not, I'll tweak it. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And then once that's done, um, I'm going to uh, tack it. So it's mocked up. Uh, I have my angles cut. As you can see, I did my little cutout around um, the cap, the radiator cap. Um, it looks a little twisted right now because it is slightly twisted uh, because it's just kind of sitting in there. I didn't weld any of this in yet. I didn't tack any of it. But as you can see back here, let's see if I can get a better view of this. Um, there's a little bit of a gap here still, and that's kind of how I want it. I kind of want an angle like that. So if I just pull it in a little bit, I could tack right in here, and I could do the other side, and uh, we'll be good to go to start bending the uh, the rest of it. The thing that uh, the reason I kept this up a little bit higher is to kind of hide the um, uh, the overflow uh, tube that's on that side. Okay, I got my tacks in on either side. Plans did change a little bit. Um, after staring at it, I decided I didn't like the look of that overflow hose hanging out the back right here. So I tucked it in. I changed the curve up here just a little bit or the angle of this on either side just a little bit to bring this up a little. Uh, unfortunately, doing that means that I don't have enough of this to bend down um, and make into my tabs uh, on the sides. Um, it would overlap just like a quarter of an inch. So not a big deal. Um, so if you are doing this, I'd say make it about two inches wider than what I did if you want to tuck something in like this. What I'm, gonna, what I'm going to end up doing now is just get another little piece of uh, plate. And this is all just um, 22 gauge. I'm going to get another little piece of stock. I'm going to cut it, same width, four inches. I'm going to make it come up and butt up underneath of this and then I'm going to weld it there and I'm going to end up just cutting this off. I'll probably end up cutting this first um, but we'll see. I'll probably butt that up, get my mark, cut this off, put it back in here and then weld across the top of it and then I'll just clean that up. I'll do that on either side. It really won't even, you won't even notice it at the end um, but I do think it looks better with uh, the uh, tube um, out of the way. I know it's kind of dark. You can sort of see it like that. So I'm wrapping it up for right now. Uh, I'm going to come back tomorrow. So the rest of this video is going to be another day. And we'll get this all welded up and cleaned up. And I'll show you guys what the end product looks like. Okay, it's taking shape. See this side still needs to be cut. This side is cut down. And I made my little bracket. Instead of bending it, I just made a piece to go down on the side there. Um, a little bit of notch there and I just put a couple tacks in. And yes, I know I had the heat up a little too high when I put the first couple tacks in. It blew through it here and it pushed it out there. So I'm going to clean all that up. I left everything a little bit big so I can work my way down and then I'll just sand it down and clean it up. But anyway, that's uh, what it's looking like right there. So I'm getting ready to do the other side and then I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done with that. Okay, there is side number two tacked. Again, blew through it a little bit in these corners. I'm um, having a hard time getting the heat that low for... Uh, for this but uh, that's fine I'm gonna take it out and then I'll put it on the bench and start uh, putting it all together welding the rest of it together getting it all sanded down and prepped and then uh, we'll get ready to finish this thing up do a little bit of metal work and uh, paint it okay after much welding and grinding here is the final product um, before I do anything else to it before I prime it paint it or whatever but that is it um, like I said, just welded the seams, welded the side panels in, uh, cleaned it all up. It still had a little bit of an issue for whatever reason. I was having a hard time getting the heat low enough um, to do this nicely. And it warped this panel just a little bit. The top's fine. The other side's fine. It's just this one. It's not bad, but I could feel it's got a little bit of a... A uh, little bit of an indentation. If I was actually doing body work, if this was like a side panel or something, it'd be an easy little skim coat, but I'm not doing anything to it. So I'm just going to leave it like that. We're going to paint it and uh, hopefully it looks okay. Oh, I forgot to mention, I'm just using these self tapping screws, if you can see it like that. I think it's like a number, oh, here, it's like right here, number eight by a half inch. Um, we sell these on the Henry's Automotive Warehouse website and on the Raybuck website. So we sell them in black and in just the uh, natural zinc finish. So uh, these things are fantastic. We, I use them for everything. They'll go through a frame like your chassis. They'll, they're good for mounting stuff like this. You could use them for grounding wires. They're just fantastic. They self-drill like they say and they suck right in. We sell them in a couple different sizes, but these little half inch ones are fantastic.
Okay, so there it is. There's the final product, all painted and in, attached on both sides with those self-tapping screws that I was showing you. And that's it. It's all done. So it looks a lot cleaner than it did before. Um, might end up doing something with that cap, the radiator cap on top, because that's, uh, I don't really like to look at that. But uh, yeah, cleans it up a bit. You can see there's the back side of it. So you can see how the uh, radiator sits underneath of that. I kept it up a little bit because I got the overflow uh, hose coming down the side of the uh, the tank on that side. So that was it. Uh, I think it looks a little bit nicer. We cleaned up the edge compartment. It looks, uh, looks better than it did before. It looks a little bit at least finished now. So uh, hopefully you guys like it. Gives you guys some ideas of what you might be able to do with your truck. Um, appreciate it if you guys like this video and subscribe to the channel. We're going to have more videos coming out. If there's anything else you want to see on this truck, let us know. And uh, hopefully we'll have some more projects to show you guys coming soon. Thanks for watching.